Hi, I'm Anu from Creation Kitchen. Today we're going to show you how to make the perfect wild mushroom risotto to pair with a Pinot Noir Reserve from Creation. But to do that we need the perfect cookware and for that I have Eunice from Goosey here. It's going to tell you more about the Le Cousset range. Thank you Anu. Yes, you're right. Indeed we do need the perfect cookware and we believe we have that this morning with Le Cousset. Um, Le Cousset is made of cast iron um, and um, for those of you who don't know, cast iron is the perfect contact conductor of, uh, of heat and it contains heat as well. Um, and to make the perfect risotto, our chef will tell us that what we need is to cook our ingredients really long and slow, which is precisely what we will be doing if we're using a local pot. Um, we start off slowly and we absorb all the water, the fragrances and the wine and the stock and all the other ingredients get absorbed into that arboreal rice. Um, and then from there, we're starting the risotto off by heating with some oil till it's nice and almost smoky. And then I add the sliced wild mushrooms. You'll see I pick the pieces quite big because then you'll have a nice mouthful of meaty mushrooms and it just doesn't disappear in the, in the pot with the rice. So I like to keep my mushrooms quite um, big. But I mean, it's personal preference. Okay, and you just want to give it some nice color and it's really important that it's nice and hot here so that it doesn't go steamy and liquidy and you get nice color and flavor on the mushrooms and we start off with the mushrooms so we re remove it from the pan and we carry on with cooking the rice in this pan so you don't lose the mushroom flavors that's already in the pan So I'm going to remove the mushroom. What's important is that your stock that you want to use for your risotto is warm, um, just beneath boiling point almost, so that you don't boil your rice when you add it, that you get quick heat release and steam release. Okay, I'm just going to turn the temperature down a little bit because I want my onions to go translucent before they go brown. Add a little bit of oil. Add in my finely chopped onions. If you like more onions, add in more onions. If you like the less onion, you don't have to really work with a recipe here. You just go by your personal taste. Okay. What I also like to do is just take a clove of garlic, give it a little. Throw it in whole, so then it's easy for you to remove it afterwards. And I'm going to throw in a whole sprig of thyme. And that's just going to flavor a little bit the, the risotto and the rice without making, overtaking the, the other flavors. And it's very easy just to remove the garlic and the, the thyme afterwards. Okay. So when your onions is at this stage, I'm going to turn it up again so that I get full heat because I want to fry the rice in the oil a little bit. So for two people I'm going to add about a cup of rice should be more than enough. This is a very rich dish. Okay. So you want to fry the rice until it's nicely coated with oil and it, you just want it to almost start frying. What's also nice and important is with this um, pan that I have here, especially for the risotto, is that you have a big um, bottom that it doesn't stew. You have a nice heat distribution and the rice is nice and open and have quick. Um, the steam can get out very quickly and easily. That's the whole point of the book that, um, pan, which is what you're cooking in um, is that you have a nice open surface as you, as you say. Also, um, because it's not a very saucy dish, you don't need a very uh, deep cooking vessel. Okay? So something that is flattened open like this will make that so will do the job perfectly. So when you get at this stage, you can see all the rice is nicely coated with some oil and you have 
have your, we have some good creation, Sauvignon Blanc here. And while the pan is on nice hot heat, we're going to add a little bit. Almost to deglaze the pan a bit. And also that you get the steam released quickly while the pan is still on high. Okay, and then what's important is to wait until that wine has uh, evaporated and it's almost a dry rice again before you start adding your stock. What we've got here is some vegetable stock. Okay, so you can see there's no more liquid in the pan. And now we start adding little amounts of stock at a time and keep on stirring until all the liquid has evaporated again. It's important not to throw in half the jug of stock because mm -hmm. then you're busy making rice soup. Again, this is the beauty of the mosaic pots, is that um, the cast iron actually retains the heat, which means you can cook on a low heat, but your pot remains perfectly warm at the right temperature uh, in order to simmer the risotto and make those rice kernels really swell out. Okay, so this is the little time consuming part, but I mean, sitting around in the kitchen. And that's the heart of the kitchen anyway, and having a nice conversation with somebody around the stove doesn't bother me, so I'm sure if I could wait for the glass of creation wine in my hand, though. Exactly, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Can I offer you a sip? <laughs> the rice gets to this stage, um, just always make sure that you don't overcook it. It's important to taste. You must still have a slight bite on the inside. It mustn't disintegrate in your mouth. So at this stage, we can remove the, the thyme and the garlic I added at the beginning. Okay, I just want to turn up the heat a little bit. Now at this stage, you can adjust the seasoning and be very careful to add seasoning at the beginning because your stock reduces and it tends to get salty. And also your parmesan that you add inside is also quite salty. So best is to actually season at the end. So what I'll do first then is just add back the wild mushrooms that we fried off earlier. Risotto is not something that you plate neatly or it's something that's supposed to be in a bowl and be almost a messy kind of meal. Um, here we go. And then just before we serve, I'd suggest another bit of parmesan. The 
wonderful thing I must just add, I understand you place your water on food, um, but the lovely thing about cooking at home, of course, is that your liquids and pop will go from your cooker or your oven straight onto your table and it's beautiful enough to leave there and to serve from your um, pot or your in today's case for that casserole. Definitely. Definitely. So I guess well, we can make the taste. Lovely. And enjoy the wine. Yes, we're a good pairing. Thank there you. <laughs>